Hi! So I'm in my bedroom today and I've got some laundry piling up, cloth laundry actually, cloth nappy laundry and so I need to fold, sort it and make up my nappies. So cloth nappies for those of you who don't know um, have a few parts to them. So this is a pocket and this is the, the cover or the waterproof pocket and it has, it's called a pocket because it has a pocket where the inserts for absorbing material because look the wee has to go somewhere right so oh, they come in all sorts of colors um, and prints some of them are so cute okay and it's got this polyurethane lining or pull that makes it waterproof and then the pocket has a built-in liner and this is a, a fleece or a suede usually and that is a stay dry layer so that baby's bum doesn't feel wet when they are wet. Some kids react to natural fibers, some kids react to um, synthetic fibers and others don't react to anything just like we all have different types of skin and we you know, different sensitivity and allergies and that type of thing. But what I do know is that with cloth nappies, um, there's a lot less chance of reacting to things because most of it is natural. It's a lot more breathable. Um, even if it is a synthetic fiber, it's not full of chemicals like a disposable would be. Um, and look, it, obviously it's a choice to do cloth nappies and it does come with a little bit of extra work, like an extra load of laundry whenever you're doing laundry um, you know it's, which means extra folding or sorting so there is that part of it but it does save a ton of money um, that's Taylor trying to get in here my um, motivation for using cloth actually started from a bad reaction that Craig had to disposable diapers disposable nappies and um, it sent me searching and uh, that's how I came across cloth nappies and so I started using it I started fading out the disposables and honestly I never looked back um, after that I had Joel and then Taylor and they've both been on cloth nappies from birth that first week or so I used disposables here and there but otherwise um, both of them the very first nappy on their bum right after they were born was a cloth nappy um, but anyway, today I'm just going to show you some cloth nappy 101 cloth nappy basics. So, you've got the waterproof cover. I don't know if you can see that that's actually adjusted here. This little line here is because it's on the smaller setting. Okay, so it's got rise snaps over here to adjust the rise of the nappy, so the size. And then these snaps here are for waist and then the second row just on the outer edges here are for hip and I will show you when I can grab a model inside who's trying to get into the room with me have a dancing tour right now when I bring her in I'll show you how to put it on and then you'll get an idea of what the purpose of these snaps are so I'm going to put it on the smaller setting these are one size fits most uh, for OSFM and it's called that because it fits most sizes you can use it from about five or six kilograms right up until potty training um, I've actually found that I use just the smaller setting because in the beginning my babies are, are small and chubby and then this works but then later on they kind of just they get taller and older but they kind of lose that baby fat and then they're kind of skinny so I actually never need to um, adjust it sometimes I go one down if I like um, if they're going through a heavy wetting stage where they're just weeing a lot which babies tend to go through it goes up and down and um, especially in the toddler um, or approaching like one year old nap and they tend to wee a bit more and then um, if there's more stuffing it means that it would be then a bit more bulky and you maybe need to size it but mostly I use the smaller setting so waterproof outer showed you the pool and the cover and inside it you do get inserts that you can buy this is a bamboo one this is a hemp 
insert and a lot of the times a good combination is one bamboo and one hemp. Um, bamboo is least ab less absorbent than hemp, it also says thinner and hemp is thicker and more sturdy um, and so you put the least absorbent at the top and the most absorbent at the bottom and then you can just put this right in the pocket like this. But what I find for my combination, and this is simply preference, and it's, it's easier for the budget, is that I use one of these, doesn't really matter which one, I don't mind, and then I use a pad folded receiving blanket. Now I've got a video on how to pad fold receiving blanket um, on you as well, which you can check out, but I'm, I'm just for the sake of using the shapes. So, it's just a receiving blanket. This is a 70 by 90 centimeter receiving blanket and I just fold it into a insert. You can also fold this like old school, holding a flat, there's different folds you can do depending on where you want your absorbency, what works basically, and use a snappy to keep it in. I've done that before, it's brilliant. Um, I will do another video on folding different folds for flats because that is a, <laughs> another thing. But what we're going to do is I pad fold for my flats. So I've got a stack over here ready to go. Also, receiving blankets of cotton flannel. Flannel is trimmer than terry towel, which is like old school, but you can use for nappies, although some people do use it. But flannel is, um, it's trimmer, so you don't have this big bulk of a nappy on your baby. But um, it's really absorbent. It is amazing because it's cotton. So that's great. So cotton um, is the least absorbent. Least if you have to compare fabrics. And then it's bamboo. And then it's um, hemp. And also cotton absorbs really quickly. Um, and hemp a little less so and in fact I mean bamboo a little less so and then hemp um, absorbs the slowest but it absorbs the most so you want your quick you know when the week comes really quickly you want something like cotton on top or even microfiber but I'll show you that in a second um, and then your sturdier thicker um, you know, fabric underneath so that's here we go and I take my nappy and I stuff it. Remember, I want my cotton closest to the to the bum, so that's going to be the one closest to the liner, not the outer. I just flip it over the ears. I pull that. Go. I'm just tucking the excess in over here. Holding it. And there we go. That's in. And because there's a liner already in you, you don't need to use a liner, but. I do sometimes use these are just suede cloth liners. They're also reusable, also washable. Can you tell that this has had lots of poo and pee and whatever from two babies? No, because they washed. Um, I will explain how to wash them in a second. Okay, so I put this in and the reason I use a liner as well is because if um, baby poops, then I can just rinse or like plop the poo into the toilet and rinse the liner um, a little easier than having this whole bulky thing. So sometimes it does come on here but it, it, it's still less so that's why I use liner but it really is just preference. You also get disposable liners but I don't, I don't like using those because um, well, you know, you can't throw it in your toilet, it will clog up your system, even though it says flushable. Please don't flush the liners. It's, it's like flushing wet wipes. You shouldn't do it. Even if it says flushable, wet wipes and liners don't disin disintegrate in water like toilet paper does. So you can imagine it's going to take a lot more to, to get it to break down. And if you're using a whole lot, it's going to clog your system. Rather, just don't do it. Um, and then it would mean I'd have to throw it away in the bin um, which means it's gonna go to a landfill and I don't I don't want that um, so that's why I don't use disposable liners but you can and it, when you're getting started by all means do it and then you know progress onto the washable liners and just okay so line up just this 
turn this upside down so you can see. So there's one hip snap over there. As I said, when I have my little model later, I will. I'm not actually not going to close that all the way. I'm just going to close it so that it's neat. And then there we go. That's one down. And now I'm going to do a bunch more. So while I'm doing this, I may as well cover another topic or another aspect of cloth nap. This is washing it. Because now you're going to ask, what do I do? How do I clean it? Okay. So, um, I use, we use what you call a dry bucket system. Dry bucket means no water. So it's not soaking. It's just actually a washing basket or a bucket just, you know, open so it can breathe because you don't want to Yes, money we nappies. And like um, when I was a baby and my mom used cloth, you know, they used to soak their nappies um, in a bucket of um, what was that stuff called? Mol not molten, steady something. Anyway, a sterilized solution. You don't actually have to do that. So you use a dry bucket system. Soaking the nappies will delaminate your polyurethane lining of your covers. It will also damage your elastics in your um, via the leg elastics. Um, anyway, I throw in the bucket. I keep it for two to three days, depending on your baby's output, how many nappies they use, or how often you wash. Um, I go two to three days. I have gone longer. I don't like to go longer, especially in the um, winter months where you're going to struggle to get everything dry. So you throw your dirty nappies, you, you take everything out. So a dirty nappy, I would, you know, open it, open it up, obviously you take it with the baby, open it up, I would then pull the inserts out like that, really undoing my work here. So if it was a pee or poo, whatever it was, it was a poo, you would plop the poo in the loo. If there's anything left on the liner, you can spray that off. I use a high pressure um, little garden um, pump, hand pressurized pump, um, just to get it off. If you have a bit day sprayer, you can use that as well. So I spray whatever off and then, you know, if, if it's a lot, otherwise the little bits are fine. Throw that in your dry bucket like that. I then, well, usually I'll grab the top like that, whatever. I'll pull the out, I'll drop that in the bucket, I'll shake this out, and then I'll drop that in the bucket, and then the cover, everything, everything just goes in the bucket. So now you have maybe 10 nappies and you're ready to wash. Throw it in your washing machine, you put some water in, then you do a rinse and spin, okay, because you want to rinse. All of the wee and any um, fecal matter that remains in there when it runs out and it also, you know, so it gives a, a flush so you rinse that. You can also rinse by hand if you want to, if you don't want to do that in your washing machine. You can rinse in a bucket, bring it out and leave it and then you just go straight into washing. After it's rinsed, now you put in your clean water with your detergent and you wash as normal. You can even add um, some towels or clothing with it because once it's rinsed, I promise you, I will show you a video when I'm doing washing and I'll show you how it looks, you know, the, um, before the rinse and even after the rinse um, in my machine. It does a really good job of even just rinsing it that it doesn't, it doesn't smell much like wee or anything, but obviously it's not clean. Um, Anyway, then you put your water and your detergent and you wash as normal. Hang in the sun is really great for any stains. The sun is amazing. Um, sun also um, works as a an antibacterial. Sun sterilizes your nappies amazingly. It keeps them white. If there's any marks, like especially that yellowy pool when they're teething or when they are really tiny babies, especially breastfed babies, that yellowness you think it's not going to come out I promise you some sunlight soap that green soap bar a um, little rub that on there leave it in the sun and then rinse it and then hang it out again it works amazingly for those tough stains but even just your regular wash if there's a little mark on there even after it comes out of the wash I promise you go hang it up take note where the mark is and what it is I promise you when you go back there it's not going to be an issue you can tumble dry but you'd have to if you're going to be tumble drying all the time, I suggest you tumble dry on low. It will affect the lifespan of your nappies 
in the sense look you're not gonna have to buy every month it's not gonna be that bad but over the long run double drying will um, shorten the lifespan of your nappies as opposed to hanging out in the sun to dry um, in the sun sometimes when you take your things off the wash they'll feel a little hard because they are natural fibers don't worry that's fine if they feel a little hard you just kind of smoosh them together um, and they soften right up um, same with, with the inserts, I just usually give them a couple of rubs and then they soft as, as good as new. In fact, let me show you, this one is a bit hard and stiff, I don't know if you can see. And I'm just going to smoosh it up a little, rub the fibers together, and there we go, all nice and soft. So your, your initial investment with cloth nappies will will be your only expense but you don't have to go and buy a bulk of three four thousand rand worth of nappies um you know at all in one go because who has four thousand rand laying around here if you do that great but you can save for it or you can buy slowly you can buy um a few at a time i haven't bought nappies in a while so i'm actually not sure of the the recent um costs but as far as I remember, you probably for two inserts of one bamboo, one hemp, and a nappy would probably cost you about 200 rand. It depends on where you're buying it from. I will link in the bottom, I'll add some of my favorite retailers um, where you can get pocket nappies, which are easy. You can also get different styles of nappies, so these are not the only ones, but I, I can't go through everything in this video. So this, this one is Biddykins, which is a really great one. And then another one is Bumblebee. I prep my nappies ahead of time, most of the time. <laughs> I try to, um, just so it's easy um, to go. And even when we go out, we use a waterproof wet bag to store it. In fact, I'll show you mine. So the wet bag, just a little handle. It has two zips. This one has the polyurethane lining, so it's waterproof on both sides. And so you put your wet nappies in here when you're out. When you're out, you change like you would a disposable. You take it off, except you don't throw it away. And you put it in your wet bag and you deal with it at home. This is a small one, so you could put two clean nappies in here and then put the dirt nappies in the wet, in the wet pocket. And that's it. So someone decided to join us. And remember I told you that with um, some babies, you can actually use the small setting or small size of nappies for, for quite a while. No, wait. For quite a while. And so Bumblebee Babies has, has a newborn nappy that even though they, they are newborn size, they are a bit... Um, they are a bit big in size, like the elastic. So if you have a baby with really skinny legs, they don't always fit right away. Um, but they definitely fit a lot sooner than the OSF nappies. Look here, look, can you help me? Can you help me? Look at the dinosaurs. And these are also second hand ones that I actually got. And these are Velcro. So they also have a rise setting, the snaps. Let's get closer. They also have rice setting snaps and um, so you can put them on really small which is this is the setting that I used to have it on for, for Taylor so you can see how small that is no I'm sorry no okay I think I'm gonna have to feed her while I do this video okay I told you it was going to be breastfeeding, cloth nappies, everything. Okay, so when if, as a breastfeeding mom, you just learn to you do what you gotta do and you breastfeed while you're making videos, while you're working on your computer. And I spoke about that in my intro, everything. As you can see, this, this is what happens. So, but because it's got the sizing and because she is quite petite, so she still fits into 6 to 12 months clothing even though she's going on 2 in June. Um, and she's so she's now like 20 21 months. I can't count right now, don't let me do that <laughs> anyway. So I have it on the biggest setting and it still fits her fine. 
but with these they come with automatically they come with a microfiber insert now, I don't generally use microfiber but it actually does work quite well so microfiber um, absorbs very quickly but it acts like a sponge so when you when it's compressed you can get compression leaks um, because you know like a sponge when you squeeze it the water will go out but it, it, it absorbs sorry it absorbs really quickly so I put this on top I mean yes so closest to the bum but very very important with microfiber whether you're using it in an OSFM nappy or a cover or a or a pocket or a newborn whatever kind of nappy if you are using microfiber inserts please do not put microfiber against baby's bum it will irritate her skin because microfiber is um, it does draw out the moisture and it will it will cause irritation on her skin so with microfiber I always use it in a pocket or I use a stay dry or protective um, liner but just because when a baby is moving and wriggling around I don't want the liner to move I'd rather just use it in a pocket just to be safe but that's just me but as long as you have something even just a, a thin um, fleece liner in between the microfiber and the skin then you're fine okay so um, then pick and pay has these bamboo face cloths and they work really really well they are 100% bamboo face cloths and bamboo as I mentioned that's what our inserts are made out of and bamboo is really absorbent so for newborn stage because they are so tiny these big inserts you don't usually get newborn inserts that you can buy extra I, I stand to be corrected maybe you do but these inserts are not going to fit very well into this okay it's it's going to be bunched up because it's too wide um if you have a look here it's going to be bunched up because it's because it's too wide um it's going to be much longer than the nappy itself as you can see it's, it's overlapping and so for a small baby with very little space in between their legs um, especially a newborn like three four months old you're not going to want to put this big insert in there you also can't fold you can't have a receiving blanket in there because once again it's going to be too bulky it's going to be too much for a small baby so what I did is I actually had newborn covers um, this is the, again a pocket like I showed earlier but the cover is exactly the same like this just it doesn't have the pocket part, the liner part sewn onto it so I used covers and I folded them like old school okay so I used the same I used these very same um, um, receiving blankets of flannel and what I did was I folded them in origami I will do a better video explaining this again so now what I'm left with is this kind of shape and then that's gonna go your baby's gonna go like that lay on it and then it's gonna go up and over and over and then you're gonna use a snappy to secure it and then you're gonna take the cover and the cover is gonna go over okay that was my greatest newborn hack to do flat and cover but let's get back to the insert for the newborn insert, these smaller ones work better. But the bamboo face cloth, if you fold it like that, and you fold it in three, so like tri fold, and then your microfiber on top of that, and then if baby's going through a heavy wetting stage, have another insert. So these were made custom by a nappy retailer, and I just bought a bunch of them, and they are hemp inserts, so they're actually made quite small. And then I do that underneath the bamboo and now I've got these three different um, inserts but they're still not very thick they're still quite trim so this is my combination for her old newborn nappies from Bumblebee on the biggest dry setting I mean I put it in like I did before I'm holding it together newborn I have small hands, very, very small hands. To give you an idea, my ring size is a size J. Okay, that's really tiny. I have very small hands, and even this can be a bit tricky. 
So for that reason, I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't suggest to buy newborn pockets. I'd rather buy newborn covers. Um, but these are pockets. Whoops. And they do, they do work fine. They actually, I still use them. Like they just came out of the wash with the others. But for example, when my mom reaches for a nappy, when she needs to change tailor, she will almost always grab the OVC ones and not these ones, unless they are pre-made. So if I pre-stuff them and I leave them for her, then she will take it. But if she has to put the like put it together, because sometimes when I don't get around sorting the nappies, um, then my mom will just grab a receiving blanket, pad folds it, grab her insert, she already knows the drill, she'll stuff the nappy and then put on as you go. And if she doesn't feel like pre-doing a couple nappies for the day, then she'll just do that every time. And it, it's quick, she did because she's so used to it, so it doesn't matter. Um, but she definitely won't grab these, she knows which inserts go in here as well, but she won't grab these inserts and put it together because it's just, for her it's just not worth it. She's like, I'm not going to struggle, her hands are a little bigger than mine, so she's not going to try and struggle to get the inserts in. Again, I used a liner just for for my own ease of, of cleaning. It's not needed. It's really not. It's really not. Um, okay, and then that's like that. And as I said, look, look, look. These are really easy because they have Velcro. Okay, Velcro gets a bit sticky in the wash, but they also have these wash tabs. So you actually close it so it doesn't stick on each other. So that's open. And then it has a little tab there that you close it to when it's washed. And that's that. And it's ready to go. And I'd like to show you the comparison in size of the, the Bumblebee Baby's cover or pocket on its biggest size because the covers exactly the same. They also have the snaps. Um, and then obviously, and then the, their covers, they also have the ones with snaps, and same as the OSFM, they're just smaller, but also they are adjustable like this. So this is newborn nappy on the biggest dry setting, and I'll show you an OSFM on the smallest dry setting. In fact, I think Taylor's actually slipped right to the of that, guys. Amazing. So, smallest on the OSFM, and the biggest on the newborn. Look at that, it's not much difference. And now I'm gonna take you back to when I changed Taylor because she did such a lovely um, send off and she even blew some kisses. Are you gonna help me? Yes, she's gonna help me demonstrate the nappy change. Are we gonna change your nappy? Yes, she's getting a bit camera shy. Are you gonna keep your phone? So, wow, it's an old phone, bringing back memories, S3 mini, okay. Hey, can you still see them? Let's move this a little. <gasps> there you are. Look there, your face is still there. Is that good? So we're going to show you how to change a nappy. It's very similar to changing a disposable. <coughs> yes, you want it off? Okay, so I don't use wipes. I mentioned that I don't like throwing wipes in the toilet because it will block up your system, event system eventually. Um, block the pipes and then also um, I don't like throwing them in the bin especially if they've got poo because well they add to landfill and wherever I can minimize that I'm, I'm gonna try so I use a regular oh, regular face cloth a wet face cloth and for poo I use toilet paper first same as we would when we go to the bathroom I would get most of the poo off with the toilet paper and I'd throw it in the toilet um, and then I'd clean with the cloth um, I throw, I do have rotating gloves and I um, I like to keep them one color so we don't get confused. I actually have more than one purple one. And then um, we just throw them in the wash um, every day or so with, with the other, with the nappies. Or just wash them by hand, quick click, and so that's actually much easier than waiting a couple days to do a cloth nappy laundry. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, as you can see, it's a wee, so it's quite full actually, like it feels really heavy. And because this is a cover, I've got one of those um, fleece um, liners that I showed you. And if you have a look, it is you can actually see how how wet it is, and it's a receiving like a plus. And it's a, and that's just gonna go straight into the dry bucket. But I'm just gonna put it down for a second. 
I'm busy. Okay, and then we are going to put a new nail on. Which one? Yeah. This one? Yeah, she says this one. Okay, so we're going to do this one. Look, I'm just holding Nappy over her for privacy sake. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit. I'm going to put this underneath her. Like that. What we want is um, to line up the back of the nappy with about her belly button. So if you see where her belly button is, it goes to about where the back of the nappy is, okay? We're going to take the, the bottom part and I'm going to just like squeeze it in just a little. Just so that the elastic, you want the elastic to go at the panty line so more or less you can kind of see the crease and we want that we want that to be the panty line you don't want it to be over that panty line because that's going to be uncomfortable okay. so I mean we've got the top row which are the waist snaps the bottom row are the hip snaps and this is the rise setting that I showed you before so I've adjusted the rise setting you usually tuck up not down just because that excess um, if you tuck it down, it can get a bit in the way over here in the corner and we don't want that. So, as you can see, it's in the panty line. It's not, let me just take it out to show you. It's not like that, okay? It's in there so that when she walks, it's not going to cause her anything. So, I'm trying to do this at the moment. So, the hip snap, you got three snaps there. So, the one in the bottom is for the hip, okay? And then I, I'm going to just naturally... Close that one where that one ends. Okay, doing this one handed is a little more tricky. You're gonna tuck in any excess of the of the liner that's sticking out. Otherwise, when she wheezes, if that's out and whatever that's touching, it's gonna it's gonna wet because there's no waterproof. Taylor lay still, please. Wrigley babies are just part of the process of being a mom, no matter which kind of nappies you use. Um, when you have a really wriggly baby, sometimes you wanna you wanna switch to um to Velcro. You also do get Velcro snaps, um, Velcro closures. Sorry, I do prefer snaps though. Okay, and that is done. That's a really good fit. Can you turn around for us? Here we go. Oops. See, I didn't even see that sticking out there. I'm just gonna pop it back in. And how you know it's tight enough? If I can still, if I can still fit my fingers in here and do that, then it's not too tight. It's not gonna, you know, leave any marks. Same with the elastics here. You know, it's I can still get my finger in there. Okay, and that. Look at that! Look at that! That's a cloth palm right over there, and it says, "I love you, I love you, Taylor." You love me. Do you love me? Yes. How much? Ah. Wow, that much? So, that is how you change a cloth nappy. And let me show you on this side as well. There's Taylor all done. New nappy, ready to go. I either sanitize my hands after changing a nappy or just go wash your hands. Don't forget. Say bye. 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 Say bye. Bye. Mwah. Bye. So that was my little cloth 101. It's where you'll mostly find me when I have some free time and the kids are playing and I have washing piled up. Usually this cot over here is filled with um, Taylor's cloth nappies because she doesn't sleep in it. Breastfeeding mom problems. She sleeps in out of bed. Anyway, um, I hope that my Clock 101 has helped you. I hope it's answered some questions. And if you have more questions, feel free to pop a comment at the bottom. Please, please do. I will link um, South African Clock Nappy Users Facebook group and the website in my in the in the bottom. I will also link um, Bumblebees and Biddykins because those are the nappies that I showed you over there. Um, and yeah, subscribe to my channel, please. I'd love the support. And you know, we talk about all things, all things mom. Uh, sometimes it's cloth, sometimes it's breastfeeding, sometimes it's a bit of both. 